Hi, welcome, Simon here, and hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a custom gaming computer built from start to finish, only the hardware, no Windows installation. All right, let me introduce some of the hardware here. I'll be using a 32 gigs DDR5. You got to make sure that you match with the motherboard. My motherboard runs on a DDR5, so I do need to have a DDR5 RAM for this motherboard. Okay, I'll be using, I'll be using an Intel LGA1700. That is my i7 LGA1700. This is the graphics card, RTX 3060. I'll be reusing the old graphics card that I had. I'll be running on the uh, two terabyte M.2 SSD drive. This is the 980 Pro. Let's put this on the side. I have a couple of intakes and exhaust fan. This is the 120 millimeter. I'll be using the uh, Noctua design which is quiet. I like my fan to be quiet. And that is my CPU heatsink, um, Noctua NHD15. I'm be using the black, the chrome. Uh, they do have a different color, but I guess the black one looks nicer in this build. And last but not least, that is the uh, power supply. Uh, that is the 850 Gold nzxt power supply all right so let's go ahead and get started what i like to do is to pre-build some of the uh, stuff before i transfer it over to my desktop case and if you're curious of what desktop i'll be using um, i'm gonna use the cross a 4000d okay so that is the uh, the graphics Ah, uh, sorry that is the uh, the desktop case that i'll be using for this build all right, let's take a look at the motherboard. This is the Gigabit Aoros Z790 Master. The motherboard is pretty heavy. I would say at least, I don't know, seven pounds right here. A good seven pounds. So what do you see in the box? Uh, once you remove the motherboard, you're gonna see a bunch of stickers. Uh, you can design it on your motherboard if you want to. Uh, that is the manual in the motherboard. More stickers. What is underneath the box? Let's take a look here. Pretty much it's just um, the wiring for... Oh, they use a nice set of cable. Okay, some of the wiring the motherboard and the Wi-Fi antenna. I'll be using that just a minute. So let's put this on the side. We do not need all the boxes around here. Okay, let's take a look at the motherboard. I guess I'll put on the gloves, brand new stuff. Okay, so what we need to do, the first thing is to remove some of the plastics because we do not want the wrapper to be on top of the motherboard, right? So let's go ahead and peel them off. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the plastic cover here. I'll be transferring um, the CPU into the motherboard. Let you guys take a closer look. That is the Intel i7 LGA 1700 13 generation. Let's 
pretty much that's it and then there's a little sticker here if you want to stick it onto your desktop but i'm just going to put it on the side okay Drop it down. Press it down. And close it. CPU is done. The next step, we're going to talk about the RAM. Let's go ahead and start installing them. Thirty two gigs. 16 on each of them okay 16 gigs on each of the ram ddr5 all right that's pretty much it and in the box you can just throw it away and your question would be which one do i need to install first you need to follow the instruction on the motherboard as you can see that it says a2 and b2 first DDR5. So which one is A2? The second slot here. This is the first, second, B1, B2. So what you need to do is to open up the two side clipper. The clipper is to clip onto the RAM, hold onto it. To install, you need to make sure they're open and on both, both ways. Now the RAM here, when you install, you got to make sure that that little gap it is not in the center, slightly off. So you got to make sure that it's aligned to the slot you got it like this is going to install to the slot but if you do it the other way around uh it's slightly off and it doesn't go into the slot okay so let's go ahead and install what you want to do is to make sure that the ram goes right onto that slot together when you're dropping it in now what you want to do is you want to lift up the motherboard and press it on both sides until the clipper locks on itself. You can see that the clipper is gonna click and lock itself when you press simultaneously down towards together. And you can hear that little click. Okay, come back again, do the same on the other second slot, B2, and press it in. All right, there you go. Once you have that installed, we're gonna work on the next, which is the um the cpu cooler but first we need to apply thermal paste i'll be using the mx4 that is the thermal paste i got here let's go ahead and install it here what i like to do oh by the way if you're not sure how to match the um the cpu you want to take a look at the cpu there is an arrow here Okay, that arrow is pointing towards that arrow. So you need to align them in a position like such. Okay. Now here comes the thermal paste. What I like to do is put a fair amount of thermal paste. And do not be too cheap by putting like a tiny little bit. Okay. Now once you put it, you should have a uh, some kind of a, a scraper to scrape. To spread it around evenly i do not have the right scraper so i'll be using a plastic like this so when you spread it around some of the thermal paste will end up to that little blue plastic scraper um, that's why i give it a generous amount and i'll come back and apply more if i need to uh, this is not a good scraper a lot of them i end up on top what what my goal here is to making sure that each of the section get applied with some of the paste um, you don't have to apply all of them but good amount okay
All right, that should do it. Because when I press the CPU heatsink, those thermal paste will get scooched out to the side of the uh, the CPU. Okay, so let's move on to the next step, which is the CPU heatsink. Let me bring it up. Okay. Oh yeah, before I go ahead and do that, let me let me install the uh, M.2 first. So let's take a look at where the M.2 should go. This is the Gen 5 M.2. You need to remove the two screws. Okay, once I've removed the two screws, this plastic need to be peeled off. They do have some sort of a thermal pad, which is conducting the heat off of the M.2 as well as here. So let's go ahead and, and do that as well. Let's see. The plastic needs to be peeled. And here comes the M.2. So that is the Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte M.2 drive. have to slide it into your right at 45 degree angle to install I believe you need to turn that little clipper to the side push it to the side and then this whole thing can go down right now you're kind of stuck and then the thing bounces back out so you push it to the slide and this thing will sit flat and then you push it back in it locks it in like such well, the design is not as good if you ask me because this thing is quite flimsy. Uh, you should always use a screw to screw it in and mount it tight. So take notes. That might be the problem later on. But then again, if you're going to install with this, then that shouldn't be a problem because this heavy metal is going to push and making sure that the M.2 is securely fastened in a position. So either way, no complaints. Okay. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because we're going to work on the, um, the CPU fan. So let's push this on the side. Here comes the CPU fan. Nakua NHD15. see what do they have in the box these are accessories and that is the fan and more that's pretty much it three three individual boxes the fan itself the heat sink and accessories you might want to follow the instruction if you're using an amd build i'll be using an intel build so i'll be using this type of accessories here okay let's take a look in the fan that is the chrome So making sure that you do not touch, well, there is, there's a plastic covering up that heat sink, but when I remove it, I accidentally pull it off together, but that is for that purpose. 
Now the fan, I'm going to remove it. I think this is too low. I, I need to remove the fan to get to the screw where the screw is going to mount onto the bracket. So you do need to remove the fan. To remove it, you just have to lift it up and then push it to the left. Kind of pull it, lift and pull. There is some kind of a, a, a tension to, to the fan which is holding it down. So you need to pull slightly and then move it. Once you have done with that, you can now remove the entire fan. So again, remember, remember how you're going to position yourself. The fan was removed this direction, meaning that that is the back, which is exhausting the heat to that direction. If you look at this way, that is the, uh, the tape and this is the front. Okay, so the front would be in the front of the motherboard. And that is the back of the motherboard, which is exhausting the heat on that side. I'll remind you when it comes to the point when I install it later. Okay, here comes the accessories. Let's take a look here. In Intel, you do need to have the bracket, some of the screws, follow the instruction. That is the AMD instruction. I don't need them. And here comes the Intel instruction, LGA 1700. Let's take a look at the instruction together. Okay. I just want to make sure I got it all correct as well. Uh, here comes the extra stuff. They do have the thermal paste and some extra wiring for the fan, like a splitter on the side. Okay, we have this first thing, the bracket, which is that. We have two of this, which is this two of this. Okay. And then have a bunch of other stuff here, which is for Intel. So that's Intel. I believe this is AMD. Let's put that on the side. We do not need that. And that is the extra fan. You're going to have two fans on the heatsink. Okay. So the first thing we like to do is to install this bracket here. You're going to have this. Let's go ahead and open it up. what you need to do is to have the caution side be up here and this thing is going to go underneath like such and then this one here is to clip on to hold that little pin Okay, let me do it again. Caution side. Push it up. Get this little clipper. Clip it in. Gonna do it for both four sides. making sure that the screw is sit all the way flush to the back of the metal bracket. Once you have done with that, <clears throat> in the back of your motherboard, you're going to see there are four holes ready for you to be pushed through. So that are the four holes you need to push it through. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 
back of the motherboard is here and that bracket we're just gonna go on top of this Did I make a mistake? It doesn't seem to fit in. Let's see. One, probably I got, oh, okay. So I make a mistake. I got to admit when I make a mistake. Let's push this one back out again. I have to go into the second slot, which is that slot. Okay, let me rewind it again. So this this little thing uh, has two position of it. One is the lower triangle, which is the this side of the lower triangle. You can see what I'm trying to say. The lower triangle, and then the other side is the upper triangle. Okay, so that is the upper triangle, meaning that you can see the bottom is is a little bit empty. This one is being pushed out. And if you do it, this is the lower triangle. That means that the top has a space on it. So in this motherboard, um, LGA 1700, you're supposed to go on the top side of it, not the bottom. So my mistake on that, I apologize, viewers. I thought it was the bottom part, but it's not. So I need to push this, redo it again onto the upper side of it, okay? The good news is that it is easy to just pop the clipper open again, pop the clipper out and then re redo it again so that is the easy side of it okay once you're done with that process let's try again lift the motherboard up tilt it realign and match that screw all the way in and that goes the the bracket Okay, well, I'm holding this still, flipping it around because you do not want that metal bracket to drop. And I'm be holding it and kind of lifting it up. There we go. Okay, once we have done with that process, uh, we need to look, take a look at the this step here, so LGA 1700, which is the blue one. So that is the blue we need to use, not the black. There's a black and here's the blue. So 1700 is the blue. We're just gonna sit it on top of the screw like such. And then the next step is to have the screw, which is this nut. We need to have four of the nuts here. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's put the rest on it on the side. And we need to have the bracket. So here comes the bracket. The bracket is going to face outwards. I believe it goes on number two. That is the position that you have to put in. Number two, okay. And next is to have the screw go on top of the thing so you have the nuts go on top of that little screw get a Phillips screwdriver 
and fasten that nut. Uh, you don't have to tighten it really hard. You just have to tighten it to a point that, okay, it's tight enough, then that's good, good to go. Okay, you do not want to really, really tighten it up. Worried about the thing is going to fall off. The thing is not going to fall off. It's, they are not going to move at all. Okay, once you have done with that process, now we're pretty much done with the heat sink. And again, we are going to remove that thing. Make sure that you remove the cover. There is a plastic cover here. You remove it. And you see that two little screw. The two little screw right there. One and two. That thing has to go and lock into this, this bracket right here. You got it? So you got to face this way this direction right let me zoom out a little bit okay you have to face so the motherboard the usb is on this side of it okay you're gonna face that and sit on top like so so you're sitting tight squishing the thermal paste right now it feels like the thermal paste is holding that heat sink get a phillips screwdriver you might need a longer one and go ahead and fasten that screw okay and you want to come and do it little by little on each side of the screw okay what i'm trying to tell you is that as you screw it down you can feel like the thing the spring there's a spring on the screw to, to kind of push it down to hold it together if you screw all the way tight on one side, that means you're pushing that thermal paste, squishing all that onto the other side. So you do not want that. You want to screw, tighten a little bit, a little bit on this side, a little bit on that. Work your way little by little on both sides so you can evenly fasten that thermal paste to get, uh, on a flat surface. Now, I'm not sure if I explained myself good enough, but um, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Now, when do you stop? The screw will tell you when to stop. Okay, when you tighten it up, you can tighten it to a point that the screw doesn't tighten anymore. That's when you've got to stop. Okay, so this thing is tight. Now again, that is where the exhaust fan, the back of the computer are gonna be. So I'll be facing this label. This is the front and that is the back. I'm gonna slide it down and then I'm gonna clip it. How do you clip it? It's, it's going to be like so. You just have to pull that little thing and then it would clip it to the back of that, that metal. Okay, and do the same on this side, pull it. And then it will just clip on. That is the fan. Where's the wire? Where's the cable? Mm. You can adjust the height how tall you want it to be okay i think for my case i have it right about i have it right about this much this much sticking out so you can adjust the height according how you want it to be okay so that is done 
now they come they do come with extra fan um fans total for this purpose for this fan again this is the the back of the sticker that is the front of the stick uh there's the front of the fan so the exhaust is going to be like such blowing that direction okay so this is a bigger fan and i'll be using that okay but there is no clipper the clipper is where did it go i thought there's a back a, a big plastic back or oh, right here so that is that little spring you need to use it And how are you going to do that? I'm going to show it to you in just a second. So what you want to do is. You want to make sure that the thing goes like this. Okay, so the hook, hook on to that in the front. And here comes the other hook, hooking down to the bottom part of this go like this okay so this one stays here and then this one goes into that bracket the hole like such okay goes in there and it goes to the top that is the spring i'm going to do the same on the other side go in from the front And it goes in from this side once you're done with that go ahead and align them and then fasten by doing the same process like how you did it on the other fan just pulling it down okay like such there you go and then it kind of covers up the uh, the ram so if you have really tall ram then it doesn't fit that well but my ram is a low profile it stays bottom that is the reason why i got that and then it's just perfect height all right pretty much we are done we just installed the entire um, motherboard the ram the hard drive the heat sink everything is installed now we're just going to transfer it over to the to the uh, desktop case all right i like to configure my motherboard first and then we're going to move into the desktop case okay let me move this on the side and the desktop case is going to be here this is the 4000 series the desktop case uh, Let's go ahead and okay. Open the side panel. That is the uh, the glass. Just open the side panel. And then you want to do the same on the other side.
Okay, this is the desktop that I'll be using and you can see that um, they do comes with the intake fan and exhaust fan um, but what I like to do is to change the fan yeah one two three four I'm gonna be changing out the fan so let's go ahead and do that. So we take out the screw. There's a screw here holding down that exhaust fan. I'll be using a Nakua 120. So let's go ahead and remove that. Remove the four screws and then put the fan on the side. And we can do the same for the front. So to remove the front, you just have to remove this Thing. and then there's a magnet that goes on top of it okay once you have removed both of them you can get to the front which is the which is the front fan here Okay, I'll be using this Noctua 120. So that is the fan. And it comes with four screws. So what I'll be having is three intakes, meaning that I have three intakes that is taking fresh air coming in from the front. So it's going to be one, two, and three. Yeah. So the fan is going to go in the back of the desktop, not the front of the desktop. Only the screw that goes to the front. But let me put one thing in first and I'll show it to you what I'm seeing here in the front.
Okay, so if you want to see that CPU fan goes to the front, like such. Okay. If I can show it to you. There's gonna be two sections of it, okay? This one, which is the 140 millimeter, um, you would, that we you would have to go into the longer slot, like the longer slot like this. The 120 goes into the smaller slot. Uh, depending if you want to do a water cooling or not, I prefer not to have a water cooling. It's just a personal preference. Uh, I'll tell you the reason why I do not like to have the water cooling. The moisture here is too much, um, meaning the high moisture in the air, and over time that the water cooling would get rust very easily, like on the case and whatnot. And again, the water cooling, you know, computers do not like water. And if you have water for some reason that things break, then you would have uh, problems problems meaning that you know you never know what would happen and then the leak happens to the graphics card or to your motherboard then it's a nightmare okay so you got to imagine things break so if the water cooling breaks and all the water get leaked onto then it's not a it's not a good sign and it's something that you don't look at it all the time so when you build the computer once it's built all you do is turn on and turn off the computer um, you don't maintain the computer it's not like the car every 5,000 miles you're gonna bring it for oil change but the computer is not like every five months you're gonna have somebody take it apart and take a look at the inside of the computer so so that is why I do not see a reason why um, why we got to do that? Uh, looks like I'll be just installing two. I'm not going to do three. And then one exhaust in the back, which is here. And again, the exhaust would be facing this direction. That's the back of it. And I'm going to change my gloves too. So. Hmm, okay. I was trying to match the color, but I realized that the screw is much, much longer compared to the silver one. So we need to change that out to the silver screw. Interesting. There we go.
Okay, we have done with all the uh, the installation. Now the point is to transfer the power supply. So once we have the power supply installed, we are probably much good to go and transfer the motherboard. So let's go ahead and put on that broken gloves. My hand is still wet, so let's wait. This is the uh, power supply. Go ahead and put the power supply in. This is the modular power supply, meaning that you can uh, just put what you need. So this is the PCIe, which is for the graphics card. And you just have to match the PCIe slot. Okay, so we're gonna have one or two for the graphics card. And you just need one. Okay, and this is the motherboard. Motherboard looks like this, so we're gonna push this on this side and then this one this on this side. Okay, there goes the uh, the 24 pin motherboard. Uh it says CPU, that is for the CPU. What's in there? The CPU, we have two CPUs. That is Regular SATA drive for the hard drive. I do not have hard drive. I'll be using the M.2, so do not need that. SATA think I do not need that. Molex, I do not need Molex. There's no water cooling or the side fans. That's pretty much it. Simple as that. Only CPU and graphics card. So once we are done with that, let's go ahead and put on my gloves. This is the second CPU. Which goes on here. Okay. That is the uh, the desktop accessories. So we're gonna leave that side. The CPU fan, the fan here would be facing down, meaning that it will be facing the bottom of the desktop, meaning that it's facing down the earth, the ground. So let's go ahead and push it all the way in. Making sure all the cables are in properly. The next step is to install them. So let's slide it in.
If I may remove the hard drive, I will remove the hard drive because it is not necessary to be in there. Because it's blocking my way. So how much do I need to remove that hard drive? It should have an easy way to remove it. Some reason that it's hard for me to go. I'm using a plier to turn that little thing here. This should just be hand tightened it, but I do not know why. It should just be hand tightened, like using your hand to tighten it up. I have no reason why the tight is so hard. I cannot even remove this. So we do not need that. I do not need the hard drive. Power supply goes in. And then we're going to have the screws. Let's find the screws for the power supply. Yeah, it's hard for me to show it to you, but you should put four screws, screwing down the power supply. Show it to you. All screws in total, putting down the power supply. So let's go ahead and get all four of them installed. Sorry guys, it is hard for me to film at the same time to install because certain position I don't like it I, I can't lift the desktop up and if I do that you guys see nothing 
Okay, so just Okay, once you're done installing that, let's go ahead and transfer the motherboard. Making sure everything is clear. You want to double check making sure that no cables are sitting on on there you just want to transfer it be patient take your time and the motherboard should just sit on top that screws Okay, like such. And the next step is to get the screws. Which they come from the motherboard. Let's go ahead and remove that. So you have three screws on the top, three screws at the bottom, which can be quite difficult to put in because the case is a smaller case. So you need to have really tiny fingers to get things in. Okay, once you have done with all that, we pretty much just have to install all the cabling and that should do it. So the cabling wise, I'll let you guys to do it uh, because the cabling is just pretty much how you like to cable uh, management, making it look nice and whatnot. And the hardware installation pretty much that was the uh, the straightforward I like to show and that's pretty much it so um, I'm gonna finish the rest I noticed that the video is over an hour now uh, which is a bit too long and yeah so the cabling I'll just let you guys do it but if you have any question comment below I will walk you through I'll answer those questions if you have any um, the cabling stuff is very straightforward here so all right thanks for watching until next time bye now